and welcome back to another episode of the Public Law right here on TammyPepperman.org, No Borders Radio. I am here with my co-host, the Omni Poet, the drummer with the mostest, Bo. How are you doing? Yeah, the drummer that uh, sued Congress. The drummer that sued Congress. I digress. So you got the whole show laid laid out here on your uh, website, TammyPepperman.org. Folks who want to play along at home, you can go and check out the link that says tonight on the public law with uh, Bo and Tammy. Right. And um, also all over the site, you know, the book section, got the treaties in there, treaties, all sorts of stuff that you can fiddle around with and click around on. And this is all thanks to Tamworth Web Development. And um, if you'd like to donate to our web hosting service, you can do so by clicking on the donate tab on uh, any of the pages at TammyPepperman.org for your convenience. Um, I mean, it's just, it's been amazing. Uh, and it's absolutely beloved here. So what are you thinking? Um, it, it's been a really overwhelming day today. I was busy all day and, uh, and of course doing the clerical stuff. I'm kind of tired tonight. Um, I'll just kick it off with the UN. Uh, the UN apparently, uh, as per the New York Times, uh, we've been watching this in the UN. Uh, the United Nations have given the Israeli military precise GPS locations of all 83 schools that were being used as shelters for 141,000 people who had fled their homes. Now, of course, the IDF and, and others have now uh, bombed those schools. And uh, at the last count, uh, we're up to almost 800 dead in, in uh, Gaza alone, and this is just, it's its not acceptable in any way. Absolutely unacceptable, intolerable. Um, it's ridiculous. I guess there are some IDF reserves that say they're not fighting. I saw in one headline. Good, good. Pull out. Repent. Jesus said repent. If you realize... Uh, what this is and what the policy is, step away from it. We know that there's patriots. We know that you've been told that you're fighting for your country and um, you know that you're fighting for banks. All wars are bankers' wars. Uh, All bankers are uh, basically uh, working for banks that are run by a board of attorneys. Right. All banks are courts, um, and of course, that uh, you know, today I was watching the IDF talk about uh, the tunnels and getting rid of terrorists. Those tunnels were put there by human beings trying to escape the West Bank after the embargo was put into place, and that's what judges and attorneys do best. They lock up, shut up the kingdom of heaven, and ensure that nobody can get out or in as they rent you, your property, and yourselves and each other. And, um, again, it's just, it's absolutely horrifying to witness these things. Uh, at her at, uh, carry proposal IDF to remain in Gaza during talks. Of course, they're part of the Confederate state. The, um, Corporation of Israel is located in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. And, um, you know, all of these things, you know, there's a drought in the United States that's moving across the, uh, quote, country, geographical state, and it, it butts right up to the original 13 colonies, but of course it doesn't touch the original 13 colonies, the original 13 banks, those are farms, colony means farms, confederacy, uh, and of course from Market Watch this week, Washington, D.C. is no longer a sleepy southern government town. A look at the city's revival. And if you go to Market Watch, you'll see just how bad Congress is hurting. 
it, it's it's uh, almost equivalent to how bad Hillary Clinton has been hurting when she said she was dead broke and she's worth quite a quite a number of billions there. Uh, again, to the military, uh, it's so sad. Um, from what the Washington Post today, a retailer hooks soldiers based on anywhere in the world, then springs the debt trap on them. And of course, uh, this is regarding credit. Um, and then there's another story on. Um, oh goodness, where did it go? Sorry. Um, oh, it's on ProPublica.org. Great report by Paul Keel about a U.S. company who routinely sues American soldiers. Thank you for your service, Colin. How one company sues soldiers worldwide. And of course, these are in regards to uh, school loans. The GI Bill. That was a bill. And um, as we've witnessed so often, we have friends and family that have joined the military in order to get their school paid for to realize later that it's at the other end. So you get to pay for the first four years, they'll pay for schooling after that, they tell you that later. It's quite absolutely, without a doubt, disgusting. Yeah, of course, Bill means you, somebody's got to pay for it, and who pays for it? Well, it's found under the judge's oath, 28 U.S.C. 453, uh, you're the negotiable instrument, and they're discharging their duties, which is to offset congressional bankruptcies. So. Absolutely, and they start that when you get, quote, home. Uh, you're required to record your DD-214 at the county recorder's office. That is the property deed. You're giving your body back over to the same corporate structure that's tricking you out from cradle to grave. Of course, it's the same structure globally since Atlantic Charter 1941. Just a recap of our earlier shows. But uh, we can't drive that home enough because you have to understand that... Uh, U.S. Congress was given world dominion under that, and then reading through the uh, Master Land Lease Agreement, uh, was put out later that year, or 42, 42 1942, and... Which is the nature of rent. That's Malthusian theory itself. So, yeah, the whole world was put under Malthusian theory, basically, huh, Tammy? Yeah, the nature of rent. Um, they try to dress it up in different... Uh, disguises like you know democracies and republics and you know separate governments parliament masks and they're all mad yeah they're all masks they're all basically okay. funneling their uh, citizens as special deposits offset that congressional bankruptcy absolutely as script writers Congress writes acts plays they're, they're really good playwrights. And of course, you pay for it. Before we go any further, I would like to give a shout out to Wiki, of all things. Oh, yeah. Uh, today on RT, Wikipedia temporarily bans Congress IPs over persistent editing. Now, this week we've had uh, back and forth play with uh, Congress, Ukraine. Uh, Russia, which are all in Confederacy, maintaining um, at the beginning of the week, uh, Russia was saying that it was the CIA who brought down uh, MH17, of course, and then uh, the first thing that the United States Inc. did was, of course, pointed the finger at the Kremlin and said that they're altering the uh, Wikipedia articles. And here's Wikipedia now saying no. We're going to ban Congress's IPs over the persistent editing. And I haven't seen a report on Russia being banned because they're persistently editing anything. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Well, yes. And uh, see how that, you know, how long it lasts. Well, before they start letting them back in there, but I can just see like all these different arms of Congress. Oh, they can't put that in there. We gotta go change this. We gotta change that. Oh, wait, I don't want them knowing that about me. Well, it's interesting because Wikipedia would have control over, you know, looking at and, and seeing their um, numbers, of course, and uh, who visits there and who's doing these things. 
and uh, it was very interesting to note that uh, it's not Russia. Contrary to uh, all the belief. And how it all works out, you know, in the end. Oh, let's see, like this story over here from Oraz.com. World's 85 richest earn more than 3.5 billion poorest in a UN report. Wow. Uh, how, how do you like those numbers? That's what you get for being the uh, pledge. Going back to Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. And that was basically the uh, <laughs> beginning uh, of this current Confederate state. Though it's just an ongoing thing, as we've noted uh, through time, it's just one long congressional action. A style. That's what it says in the Articles of Confederation. It's a style or chain of events. But the United Nations said, citing Oxfam figures in a report that highlights ways to help the 1.2 billion people who live in less than $1.25 a day, the UN's annual human development report, human development, notes that overall poverty is declining throughout the world, but says worsening inequality risks reversing the trend to improvements in lifespan and income. Canada placed number eight on the UN Development Index, measure based on education, income, health, and other measures of human well-being, is among the group of nations considered to have a very good record on human development with Norway at the top of the list. Let's see here. This is better than last year, they're saying, when Canada placed 11th uh, after making the top of the list in the 90s. Among the nations considered to have poor human development are Niger, Congo, Mali, Haiti, and Nepal. And the one third of the people are poor or vulnerable to, uh, due to, uh, to poverty, meaning they are not resilient in the face of natural or human induced disasters and can slip further behind according to the report right, right. And, and that's part of human development the international monetary fund controls the scarcity of all known currency and that includes commodities that includes human resources that includes all of these things and the UN is the one that's perpetrating this as it reports the figures they're the ones that are implicating fourth-generation warfare upon the human populace in order to eke out the most beneficial uh, economic uh, economic benefits for the United Nations, which of course are uh, corporations, um, and we're seeing that shift now. Um, of course, Canada has agreements. For example, with Texas, through the Department of Transportation, Bridges Trust, to use uh, human beings in the geographical state of the United States Incorporated to back the uh, Canadian populace and vice versa, sister states. You look at sister states and you find the, the buy and the use. <clears throat> and um, enough is enough. <clears throat> Again, no more banking on human beings. and, and um, we will see them shut down shortly. So you can read more. And the main story actually links back to cbc.ca. That's Cal uh, uh, Canada. So business world. Um, or business. Anyways. Anyways, we'll try to post some links and pull down um, when we get the video up there on YouTube for those that like to follow up on the research. And speaking of billionaires, um, there is an interesting, uh, you know, the, the world is under warfare, um, drought happening throughout the western United States Incorporated, um, and then Richard Branson is posting on his, his uh, Facebook, quote, right now I'm just delighted to be alive and to have had a nice long bath. He's taking selfies of himself in this huge bathtub. And um, I thought it was quite ironic that he would even 
you know, it's just disgusting when, when so much, so many things throughout the world are horrifying. Yeah, we're going to put that Maybe. picture right next to uh, some starving uh, children in Haiti or something. Right. Sick. So... This Comcast murder, did you see that thing now that went through Congress this week? As Con uh, this is being reported by David Sirota. As Comcast murder advances, the U.S. House just quietly passed the GOP bill to block local competitors to Comcast. So they're monopolizing Comcast, and of course they'll come after uh, Comcast later for running a monopoly, but it's the United States Incorporated, of course, and congressional actions. Right. All these corporations and countries, for that matter, who are listed as corporations, are all... Uh, they're all the, 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 the part of the same thing because through uh, articles of incorporation. Absolutely. So, what else you got there? Uh, SPTimes.ru is reporting Russian troll factory explo exposed 300 employees, 100 comments a day, equals 30,000 pro Kremlin troll posts daily. Oh, wow. that was interesting. So, so they got their own troll facility, and what happened to it? Um, well, they're just reporting on it. It's the same thing that Michelle Obama has and, and uh, everybody else. So they have lots and lots of friends, but they pay their friends. It's kind of like, again, hanging a pork chop around a dog's neck to get it to like you. Yeah. Well, we saw the same thing in some solicitation that we saw uh, from uh, Google or... Uh, one of these advertisement companies, for so much money, you can get like a, a guaranteed thousand views on your YouTube video and uh, two custom um, comments, uh, you know, in a package deal. Uh, yeah. So you can buy popularity. Right, which is sad because it's supposed to be, you know, the truth. That's all that matters. It's not a consensus reality. We're coming back into the truth, and that is what the public law is all about. We're seeing Cameron. He's been bragging about his policy lately, but um, apparently it's not working out so well for him. Um, over on the independent.co.uk, uh, Cameron's uh, big society in tatters as charity watchdog launches an investigation into claims of government misuse. David Cameron's flagship Big Society Network is being investigated by the Charity Commission over allegations that it misused government funding and made inappropriate payments to its directors, including a Tory donor. The organization, which was launched by the Prime Minister in 2010, was given at least £2.5 million of national lottery funding and public sector grants despite having no record of charitable activity. Isn't that sick? That's worse than a priest crying on children. It's it's equivalent to uh, predation. Well, all of these hungry human beings and homeless human beings foreclosed on human beings. Here's David Cameron and his cronies, 2.5 million pounds of national lottery funding and public sector grants, despite having no record of charitable activity. Shame on you, Mr. Cameron. Yeah, they, they all look alike to me. They all act alike. They're all the same. And of course, if you'd like more information on the appearance of charity, uh, I suggest reading Matthew 27. And of course, Governor Pilate there washes his hands in holy water as he does the most horrifying things whilst offering winning hearts and minds. And of course, Wiki defines hearts and minds as a concept occasionally expressed in the resolution of war, insurgency, and other conflicts in which one side seeks to prevail not by the use of superior force, but by making emotional or intellectual appeals to sway supporters of the other side. Of course, you're familiar with this. It was first used at, during the Malayan emergency by the British, and you did a great report last year about a poor Malaysian female that had been kept as a refugee in a prison. She could see her child one hour a day or two hours a day, her newborn infant. And yeah, one hour a day. It's very, very, very disgusting. 
that after she was offered hearts and minds and picked up as a refugee that she was treated so poorly. Yeah, and after they raised her town, what choice did she really have, you know, left on the table? Absolutely, and that is the epitome of this war. Low intensity conflict, fourth generation warfare. It doesn't look like a war because they have nice things. It's the same thing as Chester the Molester driving around with candy, offering it to the little kids. Yeah. Well, are you ready for this? To, uh, I'll hit the Washington Post here. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the headline reads, One idea to expedite government oversight? Toss officials in water and see if they can swim. Oh, I love that one. That one's Matthew 18. To help House Oversight Chairman Daryl Issa, Republican from California, speed up his witch hunts, one Democrat suggested Friday perhaps a 17th century method might be more efficient than lengthy hearings and pre- Destined committee votes. Representative Tony Cardenas, Democrat from California, is prepared to toss the likes of former IRS official Lois Lerner, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, and White House political advisor David Simmons into water to see if they'll sink or swim. An above ground pool. Naturally, it would be unrealistic to have an in-ground one. Uh, would be placed inside the House Oversight and Reform Committee hearing room. We are picking winners and losers. When it is clearly obvious that witches can only be found by dunking them in water. If they float, they're a witch. If they don't, installing a pool will allow us to retrieve the non-witch before he or she Drowns. That is hilarious because that's what the witch hunts were all about. It was the same magistrates doing that to human beings. And um, it's interesting to see that this is a suggestion to you to Congress. And of course it's not a witch hunt. Congress is evidence to be perpetrating genocide and human trafficking. Yeah. And um, it goes back to the good, good Congress versus bad Congress. It's... I mean, good Congress isn't just an oxymoron, because right. uh, Congress means with transgression, so... Right, and it goes back to the poll this week about uh, Darth Vader there. Darth Vader is, is more like than Congress and presidential candidates, and, and uh, you name it. Interesting. Oh, it was sad, though, that people would pick Hillary Clinton over Jar Jar Binks. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Jar Jar, you know... You'd be better off with Jar Jar, let's put it that way. You'd be better off with nobody acting as Congress, but uh, you've got to get you over that hurdle first. Because a lot of people just don't want to give up their government. As bad as it is, they think it, you know, bad government is still better than no government, which is ridiculous. Absolutely. Over at the... Click Orlando.com. This is out of Orlando, Florida. Police officer arrested in on duty shooting. Uh, officer was charged in a February 24th shooting. And the story reads um, Orlando police officer turned himself in to Seminole County Jail on Thursday after being charged in a shooting while on duty. Orlando police officer, uh, Orlando police said officer David Johnson has been charged with shooting into an occupied conveyance and discharging a firearm in public in the February 24th indict or incident. Police said they were searching for a man accused in an assault and located him in the parking garage of the City View Apartments in downtown Orlando. Officer said the suspect tried to run them over when they tried to arrest him. So three officers, including Johnson, opened fire. The suspect was not injured. Shooting sparked an investigation by OPD, which then presented the 
investigation findings to the state attorney's office. After a decision by the grand jury, the state's attorney's office obtained a warrant for Johnson's arrest on Thursday. And according to police, Johnson turned himself into Somali County or Seminole County Jail and has since posted bond. That was an interesting word that was used in there. Did yes. you say conveyance? It says... He was charged with shooting into an occupied conveyance. Wow. Isn't that an adherence to uh, USC 81? Uh, piracy and privateering. And uh, it looks like uh, we're going to forego piracy and privateering at the behest of corporate counsel? Is that what it looks like to you, too? Sure seems that way by the wording. And uh, does it say if this, quote, suspect is charged with anything, or is it just an officer that was attempting to privateer a conveyance? Yeah, there's no mention of any uh, charges on the suspect. It just says the suspect was not injured. Thank goodness for that. Brought into well, then we're talking about uh, straight-out murder. Right. And not injured, he was not brought into law, according to this uh, media presentation, which is absolutely astounding to see. And I would love to see more of these things, as it appears that uh, somebody has invoked 46 U.S.C. 313.25. Somebody right. volunteered to assume the charges. Yeah, you really want to read uh, 313.25 through 313.41. Beautiful, beautiful one. I like that. And that's where we get into the, uh, also the idea of altering one's heading. And the public law. The foundation of the public law. If you attempt to put a lien on a public vessel and you're volunteering to assume the charges under 46 U.S.C. 313.25. Okay. Yeah, and this is all in my case. You, you can find that at tenpairment.org too. Go into the documents and the Dropbox. Uh, we'll take you to the authorized documents, etc. And uh, it's all in there. You can see all these things that we talk about uh, in their language. We put into the court case, and uh, this is where the accountability is coming, coming to hit home for these. Clowns running around claiming to be your representatives. We were going to get into some of the um, old charters and bank uh, documents and, and th things tonight um, for our listeners, new listeners, and students. Um, you know, we were seeing today that uh, the Netherlands wanted to hold. Russia accountable and, and all of these things for the death toll. Well, that's not going to happen either. Uh, we're not going to be in the uh, action of prostituting human beings uh, dead or alive anymore. And um, those estates do not belong to you, regardless of treaty ability or grant ability. And of course, the Netherlands uh, entered into the Confederacy way, way back when. October 11, 1614, with the grant of exclusive trade to New Netherlands by the States General of the United Netherlands. And then, of course, uh, by 1648, everybody had entered into the Roman Alliance. And uh, you can find that at avalon.law.yale.edu, avalon 17th century charter underscore zero 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 one one dot yes we well, you, you probably put that in uh tanning right yep i'll do that after the show and okay. get everything all updated you wanted to also uh, touch on the articles of confederation of the united colonies of new england from may 19th 1643 i bet too right the articles of confederation 1777 were not the first ones. No, they were in, in addition to uh, and according to the rules of incorporation. Articles of Confederation are, are of course, Articles of Confederation or uh, Incorporation. 
So, as a lead up to the uh, Charter of Westphalia, I suppose, in 1648, uh, the Articles of Confederation of the United Colonies of New England, May 19, 1643. The Articles of Confederation between the plantations under the government of the Massachusetts, the plantations under the government of New Plymouth, the plantations under the government of Connecticut, and the government of New Haven, with the plantations in combination therewith. Combination therewith, and and those words are very very important because they brought in, you know, you know what they brought in. And in uh, 1945, they brought in the United Nations into their little perpetual union. In 1802, they brought in the United States incorporated into the perpetual union, and um, it just built on that corporate structure from bottom to top. Right. Uh, now, does it behoove us to read this or just summarize it? Because it's kind of long, 12 just, long articles. Well, and of course we've read it. Um, for all of our students, again, I'll put it at TammyPepperman.org uh, with the archives of the show tonight. And you can also find that at avalon.law.yale.edu, 17th century uh Article 1613. Okay, we'll just read Article 2 here because uh, th this basically is um, kind of the significant one here in what it says. The said United Colonies for themselves and their posterities do jointly and severally hereby enter into a firm and perpetual league of friendship and amity for offense and defense, mutual advice and succor under all just occasions, both for preserving and propagating the truth and liberties of the gospel and their own mutual safety and welfare. Right, their own mutual safety and welfare. And, um, of course, uh, you look at propagating the truth and liberties of the gospel. Now, in the original charters of the bank, uh, Charters, of course, 1602, 1609, uh, 1620s, all of the original 13 colonies were being established as those banks. And, um, of course, they were bringing the gospel, not the gospel of God, mind you, but the gospel of their promoted version of Christianity. And they were calling human beings heathens and taking them over, which is the word succor. They were seceding all of the states, and of course, you plebeians, back at the um, Declaration of Independence, were all seceded because you didn't know who you were. So they took over your states, declaring you civilly dead. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The word "core" then uh, basically is uh, synonymous with succession, mm -hmm. which we talked about here before. And it means to take over the estates. Right. It's That's always what they did. Been the same perpetual league, perpetual union, united union, united nations. Uh, they're just in contract with each other, building an enterprise. And today we are talking a lot about the port authorities and um, all of these. Planes going down, planes being shot out of the sky. Uh, Japan's on the hook for this uh, stuff with Boeing and all of these things. Uh, if you want to learn more about port ability, port authority, you want to start reading on the agreements between the United States Incorporated and Cuba. Uh, for example, in 1903, the lease to the United States by the government of Cuba of certain areas of land and water for naval or coaling stations in Guantanamo and Bahia, Honda, July 2nd, 1903. Now, when you start reading into these things, you'll notice that they are blatantly, and it's evidenced in, by their works and actions, human trafficking. They're trading human beings to each other. Right. That's what the ports are. And then they followed through, of course, with such as the... Um, 
1832 nullification proclamation when Andrew Jackson came in and, and uh, shook it all up and oh it's just it's again a style a perpetual union chain of events congressional actions and you've got a great script writer great playwright and a whole bunch of jazz stores facilitating its directives yeah so that was 1903 and so it, it follows all the way through to I mean forever the first one was in 1903 uh, they had another one agreement between the United States and Cuba for the lease of lands for coaling and naval stations February 23rd 1903 uh, that one preceded that one of course and um, oops I lost the other one I'll get it in at TammyPepperman.org. There was three uh, important ones that should be uh, taken advantage of and read uh, thoroughly by anyone who wants to know. And then, of course, uh, we need to really hammer home the Treaty of Westphalia. When Rome came together as an alliance, France, Austria, Germany, Everybody came together and restructured Rome. Yeah, look at that first paragraph. It's just... Uh, Full of everybody. Yeah, it's just all about everybody that was coming in under this treaty, and, and I think it covers the world. It does, because, you know, as you know, uh, the Federal Republic of Germany is sitting in the District of Columbia. Austria is in the District of Columbia. Uh, Australia is in the District of Columbia. Cuba, Japan, Russia, Moscow, Ukraine, um, Greece, and so uh, all of these entities are in a perpetual union, the Confederacy, the League of Nations, the United Nations. Absolutely horrifying. They've just been raising the world to their gain forever. And, of course, the number one rule, if you want to build something, you've got to raise whatever's there first. Burn it to the ground, and then you can industrialize. That's the name of the game. Yep, and the Gazans can tell you about that, Palestinians. Oh, and it's been so sad. I mean, over and over and over today, it just, for me, it just tears me up to watch and witness these things as so many human beings, children, men and women are, are slaughtered without discrimination by these confederates in action. Yeah, see, you know, there's no safe place for them. Let's see, uh, you know, exactly uh, as this headline from Investment Watch says, no safe place after deadly attack on Gaza school. UN warns 150,000 seeking shelter are at risk. Yeah, they're at risk if they go to those shelters because the UN's going to uh, give them the uh, GPS, uh, GPS bombing coordinates. Right, and that, that was something so sick, but it, I was uh, amazed at that what came out in the mainstream media that the UN had given them the coordinates. And the UN must, must, must be held accountable for these things immediately. All of their assets frozen in tandem shut them down, stop the wars, stop the wars everywhere for these banks. Stop killing humanity for corporate interests. I guess that uh, wiki ban is for 10 days, I just read here. So t for 10 days, Congress is not going to be allowed to change or alter wiki pages that might be interesting to watch and see what happens because uh, exactly you know maybe humanity will all wake up when their history is not spoon fed to them by Congress we'll see yep well, what else we got here uh, US deflation is only a few time zones away it says uh, yeah, they, they just won't there. quit. They've been uh, going back and forth on an inflation rate. One store says it's disappearing. One store says it's not. Well, me as a source, it doesn't look like it's 
you know, changing much as uh, the increase in the food costs and gas costs and everything else are going up and up and up. And again, uh, pull your hands out because any corporation involved in these things is going to be foreclosed on for aiding and abetting the known enemy of humankind. Not funny. Well, I guess I'm kind of a good headline here. Resolution against new Iraq war passes house in landslide. Uh, yeah, probably because they don't know where they're going to get the money to fight more wars. Or they're having a harder time selling the propaganda to, you know, serve up new wars. Which is beautiful. I mean, that's what we've been pushing for. And I'm praying that these corporations will take their hands out. It's all... The corporations funding these things. Find something else to do with your time. Maybe arrest some some uh, politicians. Um. Okay, then back to uh, Israel again. Israel calls Brazil a diplomatic dwarf, and then brings up World Cup humiliation. I guess that's for that uh, soccer thing. Right, uh, entitlement. Uh, in a statement on Wednesday, Brazil condemned what. It said was a disproportionate use of force by Israel and its Gaza Strip offensive by pulling out its ambassador from Tel Aviv for consultation. The country is the second country to recall its ambassador from Israel. The equator did so earlier in the week. At first, the official reaction from Israel appeared sanguine. Brazil is a friend, but we think its position is not balanced. Israel's general counsel, Sao Paulo, Yul Barnea said, according to the Wall Street Journal, adding that Israel should have a right to defend itself from the thousands of missiles being fired at it by Hamas and other Palestinian groups. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, of course, I don't see how they come up with those kind of uh, statements. As if Where are they getting Israel? missiles? They can't even get food and water in there. Right. And um, to make such a claim is just absolutely outstanding and, and uh, blatant blasphemy. Uh, from RollCall.com, blogs, RollCall.com, former House staffer pleads guilty to theft. Former House staffer Brian Proke pleaded guilty Friday to theft of government property while serving as an office rent manager, Assistant Attorney General Leslie R. Caldwell announced in the press release. According to Legistorm, Crokes 28 worked for Representative Gus Barakas, Republican Florida, at the time of the theft and previously worked as a scheduler for then Governor Charlie Crist. According to the Department of Justice, Crokes' job duties included transmitting salaries and bonuses to the House's Office of Payroll and Benefits. He admitted that between April 2012 and March 2013, he submitted unauthorized paperwork, giving himself a large, larger salary and bonus. So it looks like Charlie Chris is rolling on one of his staffers, which is sad to see because Char Charlie Chris is just disgusting. I remember when uh, Jeff was having to deal with him, and he happens to enjoy the same things that m the majority of politicians enjoy, and that is preying on children. Yes, they like that. They're easy prey. Children and elderly are their favorite victims. Yeah. That's it, too. I mean, that's just sick. Sick, sick, sick. Uh, there's one from the Indy Channel here. Um, former Marion County deputy sentenced for assaulting inmate. It's just nice to see that he's being held accountable for these things. Indianapolis, a former Marion County Sheriff's deputy accused of assaulting an inmate in 2012 was sentenced Friday. David Carrico had been deputy with the department for seven years when he was accused of kicking, punching, and slamming an inmate onto the floor. The incident was captured on video at the RSD Processing Center. Carrico threw hooks to the floor, got on top of him, and forced him against the floor surface, MSC, the MCSD said in a release at the time. It appears in that video that at no time did Hooks resist or fight. On Friday, a Marion County judge sentenced Carrico to one year of home detention and one year of probation to be served concurrently. 
Quote, we work with and rely on our police partners every day, but clearly we cannot give them a pass if we believe an officer's conduct steps over the line. We felt this case deserved a felony conviction and are pleased to see that, en that entered by the court today. Carrico was fired from the Sheriff's Department after the allegations came to light. Sounds like he got off, but uh, that's the most beneficial and profitable schematic uh, and legal process is uh, the use of parole and probation by which to violate somebody. So we'll see what happens. Nice new surety there. Well, we all know what side the attorneys and judges are on. And uh, thinkprogress.org published a story. Judge sides with oil industry to overturn Colorado town's ban on fracking. Okay, this is a town that uh, basically uh, the, uh, let's see if I can get down to the uh, meat of this. So we got to recover this story here, but uh, they uh, didn't want this fracking. Of course, it's causing all kinds of problems, and the yields for the fracking are shown to be like 90% less than what they uh, were uh, claiming they would be. Right. And um, there's a reason for everything. And um, when we did our research on fracking, uh, it was surprising to find that fracking, the term, is used in the disposal of radioactive waste. And um, this is not going to be overlooked. It will not be overlooked. And um, this oil company is using this in, as an excuse to depopulate, of course. And um, you can find this information at TammyPepperman.org. Uh, if you Google it, you can Google fracking as a term used in the disposal of radioactive waste. And you'll find not only the geological survey uh, documentation on it, uh, but also the uh, from other entities as well in the uh, action of genocide. So, okay, the Colorado Towns voter approved ban on fracking in residential areas was shot down on Thursday. This is after the towns, you know, got together and, and you know, they all, the voters, I don't like voting and all that, but getting beyond that, here they all said, no, we don't want it. And um, the bank said, yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. On Thursday, after a judge sided with the in, uh, an industry lawsuit claiming only the state government has that kind of authority over oil and gas operations. Right. You plebeians don't have any authority. You granted it us under the doctrine of election, is what they're saying. Right. Colorado District Court Judge D. D. Mallard. How do you spell that for our law enforcement here? D. Period. D. Period. Mallard. M. A. L. L. A. R. D. And he's about to be stopped. I don't know, D.D. price stands for uh, uh, you know, dumb doofus, I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, and this I mean, these guys aren't dumb, though. These guys know full well, too, what they're doing. Right. He's a banker. He's a banker for the oil industry. And you said he's a federal magistrate? Federal judge? Yes, his court, uh, Colorado District Court. And let's see here. So, where was I? It agreed with the Colorado Oil and Gas Association's lawsuit against the town of Longmount, Colorado. That lawsuit argued that if local governments were able to have control over whether fracking occurred in their neighborhoods, it would be unfair to those who already own gas and oil underneath those towns. Now, who owns that? oil and gas. The corporations, well, they can't own anything. They're a fiction. Right. They can't sue anybody. That's a fictitious plaintiff on both sides, the town and the oil company. The city's prohibition will have an ex uh, extraterritorial effect. Extraterritorial. 
Right. Territories we found in their language is the human being. The taken human being. It refers to a forcibly taken human being. But anyways, it will have an extraterritorial effect on the development and production of oil and gas. Assistant Attorney General Jake Matter wrote when the lawsuit was originally filed in 2012. The city ban affects the ability of owners of oil and gas that underlie the city's residential areas to obtain an equitable share of production profits. The debate over fracking, a controversial method of extracting fossil fuels by injecting high-pressure water and chemicals miles deep into the subsurface rock, has grown substantially in Colorado. With five cities and towns already voting to ban the practice in their area, the communities are fighting for the ability to enact stricter controls and oil and gas development than the state currently allows. Industry, however, has been quick to sue all five of the communities seeking residential bans, arguing that only the state has authority to ban drilling and the Colorado ones cannot decide to keep it out of their communities. That's you don't evidence. like being depopulated? Too bad. Yeah, and the evidence of genocide is in the U.S. Geological Survey's um, documentation, quote, for the disposal of radioactive waste by hydraulic fracturing and grout injection, it is considered essential that the induced fractures be nearly horizontal, period. I mean, I know that it's hard to wrap your mind around, but the first sentence says everything. For the disposal of radioactive waste by hydraulic fracturing and grout injection, it is considered essential that the induced fractures be nearly horizontal. They're, they're directing the uh, disposable, disposal of radioactive waste. That is the premise or the purpose of fracking. There's other ways to uh, garner uh, gas and oil other than fracking. Fracking is used for the disposal of radioactive waste. Well, if they wouldn't design the cars to suck up so much gas in the first place, I mean, there's there's no reason for this because uh, we've we've seen the evidence out there that uh, the intent of the butterfly carb that Rockefeller pushed back in the day uh, when he uh, took over uh, and uh, squelched the fish carburetor. Uh, the, the, the intent of it is to use a lot of gas. Right. And the things they don't need but fumes. Right. Uh, there was a guy out there on YouTube, he built a motorcycle uh, or a lawnmower. He rigged it to uh, run on just the fumes of the gas that he had in this glass jar. Took off the whole carburetor and uh, there's no need for any of that stuff with, with fumes. And we're talking about mowing your grass for like uh, five cents on, on, under this kind of a system. Right. And then, then, you know, we've got friends that went through, quote, specialized training under a patent. And um, they've got <coughs> technology to make cars less efficient and to make them more efficient using just simply uh, binary technology, computer technology. And um, it, it's quite profound to see these things occurring right in front of our eyes. And, and um, I keep forgetting to get the name of those um, types of things. But all yeah, and yeah but you know how much of that is, is, an, is an illusion? Because they're presenting that they are trying to make more efficient cars. But the underlying premise, going way back when, uh, they're not addressing that. And that's where it all started. We're talking about... Uh, you know, cars that that with these fish carburetors, uh, like like uh, the one guy put on his '57 Chevy, he was getting uh, like 85 or 100 miles a gallon. Right, and and the ones that we know are doing the same thing with trucks and stuff, and they're they can make them more efficient by simply manipulating the brain. And it's very interesting to see uh, these things. Uh, you know, coming out now, and again, I'll, I'll get the name of the, the um, product 
and I'll post it on TammyPeppermint.org as soon as possible. Yeah, well, so we know that it's basically another aspect of the light bulb conspiracy, uh, planned obsolescence, and they make little improvements, uh, you know, here and there as window dressing, but they never address the underlying theme. Right. It goes back to the beginning. Right. And again, uh, there's a documentary that, that calls attention to that. Who killed the electric car? And uh, that, that technology was there a long time ago. And yet, electric cars are barely off the ground now. And uh, it's very, very important and very, very um, imperative that humanity start learning everything. Hesiod said that. Know everything. Don't limit yourself. Learn everything, experience everything, and the more you know, the safer you're going to be. Because there's a hunter called attorneys out there, there's a hunter called psychiatrists out there, and all of these concepts are used to shut up your kingdom. If you don't know these things, then, you know, you're, you're out of luck. But, uh, again, go to TammyPepperman.org. Tammy We're trying as quickly as, as we can to enlighten everybody in and allow you this awareness is so important because that is the mark on the door. The removal of the firstborn son, of course, is uh, through education or pedagogy, attendance on boys. And um, his way out of that is for you to know, you know, have that mark on your door. If you have this knowledge, you're not going to be preyed on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Africa's largest refinery finds <clears throat> 2.7 tons of gold missing after computer system upgrade. What the heck? Okay. Yeah, that's a weird story here. On over to the blacklisted news. It's one thing to implicitly admit there is a physical gold shortage, and as a result, nations such as Germany are unable to repatriate their physical gold held in the safe and trusted confines 90 feet below the New York Fed. Gold which may or may not be there and has likely been leased out exponentially to cover paper shorts by virtual, virtually every uh, biz overseen central bank. Right. That's the dollar. BIS. And the BIS paper gold selling team itself, of course. It is something totally different to Corzine as it as in vaporize. Right. 87,000 ounces of physical gold, some 2.7 tons, and blame it on a computer upgrade glitch, yeah. which is precisely what ran Africa's largest refinery and processor of about a third of the world's gold since 1920 has done after it discovered that $113 million in precious metals missing after adopting a new computer system. Right, yeah, it just disappeared into the thin air. Uh, you know, gold's been backing the petrodollar, and of course, the human being backs the gold on the other end through that notes. And uh, I'm sure we can find it if we dig deep enough, everybody. You know where it is. But uh, it's very interesting how they play these games, isn't it? Oh no, we lost some of our gold. Yeah, well, that's what they kind of did uh, with the 1933 bankruptcy. Uh, they shipped it all over to Germany. They said they shipped it all over to Germany, but Germany is a corporation located in the District of Columbia. And Germany says that they don't have any gold. They're looking for their gold. What, what do you think a Navy's there for? What do you think the, the Army's there for? Is the 1947 National Security Act, you know, and, and uh, what are banks? Black's Law Dictionary defines a bank as a court. It's very, very different than a representation of a bank that's maintained by the Federal Reservation System, which Jesus pointed out. It was pointed out in, in uh, Matthew 27. The reservation that Judas had, his rights were reserved over another. He was paid to deliver up Jesus through the Federal Reserve. 
And in that, those monies could not be put back in the treasury. Well, what does it say about the treasury in the dialogue of the exchequer? Treasury is all of those words that are used in the court. The original 13 colonies and all of these other courts, they're sitting on a bunch of gold, and they always have been, and it's guarded and guaranteed by their military force, which has been unaware of these things, of course, because uh, under the National Security Act, these are sheriffs, law enforcement, everything that surrounds these courts. Uh, let's see here. So, <clears throat> let's see. Looking at the headlines over at CNN. Uh, new Israel issues ceasefire warning. Uh, uh, has Gaza coverage been fair? Uh, of course, we know it hasn't. Matter of fact, it kicked out two reporters from, you know, uh, that area that were uh, getting a little too uh, off the point of making uh, the Palestinians the bad guys. Right, they did the same thing in their Ukraine as well. Deported a journalist today or yesterday, I can't remember when it came through. It's been interesting how... Obama advisor, impeachment possible. Here we go with that impeachment word again. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it doesn't matter, though, what they want to present this as, right? Because uh, Obama's part of Congress. We already indicted Congress. Right. So they're indicted. He's indicted. From SBS News just now, 32 minutes ago, labor pledges to ban lobby groups from meeting with MPs. That's amazing. No more lobbying. That's going to be something to watch. Well, I would want one lobbyist group in there. The, the lobbyist to the lobbyist group to uh, and Congress. Well, this is a different one. BBC News World uh, rape case stopped as judge fell asleep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> These bankers, they just figure they have it in the bag. There's already been a cognitive judgment anyway, so you can just take a nap. Yeah. He wasn't performing his duties, though, as far as... Uh, <laughs> Banking. The, uh, no, the acting. Yeah. BBC.com. Uh, judge falls asleep during child rape case. The judge is being investigated after he was accused of falling asleep during a child rape trial. A complaint was made against recorder... Philip Chaffin on the first day of a trial at Manchester Crown Court. Barristers complained that the judge had fallen asleep as the first alleged victim was cross-examined. The trial was abandoned and must now start again. The Judicial Conduct Investigations Office said Mr. Chaffin could not comment while the matter was investigated. A spokesman said the office was aware of the allegation and an investigation is underway. Well, corporate counsel already wrote his rulings, so they don't have to stay awake. I think this is just a presentation. Maybe. Mr. Chadden is a recorder, barrister, who spends between 15 and 30 days a year sitting as a judge. So he really doesn't have that much to do. Um, if he's found guilty of misconduct, any disciplinary action will be decided by the Lord Chancellor and the Lord Chief Justice. In the case of Mr. Chadden was presiding over, a man was on trial for raping a child and other sexual offenses against children. The Crown Prosecution Service said the case would be relisted as soon as possible and that the complainants and other witnesses were being kept informed. You can find that story again at bbc.com, News UK England. I hear they're getting awfully sick of the BBC over there. I, I really like the BBC recently. It's been really um, doing a good job reporting the truth from what I've seen. Really? Okay. Well, I know oftentimes at uh, the midnight hour, they run the BBC on the NPR over here. And... Um, yeah, I sometimes listen to that late at night. I think we're coming into a new wave of uh, reporting. 
journalism and the truth. I hope so. I don't want to keep doing this forever. Mm -mm. Let's see over to RT right now. Watch it today. They're listing an MH17 tragedy timeline. Uh, let's see. And also, let's see the top headlines Israel, Hamas agreed to 12 hour pause in Gaza hostilities. U.S. pulling out its Cold War era plans over Ukraine conflict. Top commander admits. Sanctions against Russia spark AK-47 buying frenzy in U.S. Uh, let's see. Any of that sounds like good to you? Well, what's uh, very interesting is, uh, you know, we've got all this stuff going on. Uh, I'm still, like, processing this last week and the uh, white flags flown over the Brooklyn Bridge and then again today now on ABC abcnews.go.com a river in China mysteriously turns bloody red overnight hmm. uh, the environmental inspectors from Wenzhou Environmental Protection Bureau said they have not found the cause of the incident Although water samples seem to indicate the suspicious color, suspicious color was a result of illegal dumping in the river, but the whole river turned blood red. Hmm. It's been very, very interesting to see because these are, you know, of course, uh, for those of you who um, follow Revelation, it's um, kind of, um, it, it, you know, a lot interesting. We'll keep everybody updated. White flags over Brooklyn and uh, just uh, many things, including uh, the UN, which is a combination of all of the nations, including the Confederacy, uh, being, you know, shown for locating victims of a uh, coming bombing that did occur, and uh, that also indicates Wormwood. I mean, that's the metaphor of Wormwood. And everybody was waiting on a meteorite hitting the earth and everything else and all of these different conspiracy theories. When in reality, Wormwood is just this huge star that falls. And of course, the metaphor on that one would be Congress and the Confederacy itself. So we'll see. We got red rivers and white flags over Brooklyn. Yeah, I guess they're <laughs> investigating the white flags in Brooklyn thing now. Um, After originally law enforcement said that it looked like art and they weren't going to investigate it now that it appears like the attorneys are involved. Yeah, the attorneys must have came in and said, no, you gotta, you gotta try to generate some business here. Right. Um, well, let's see, RT.com UK, uh, the Cuts to the benefit system have thrown more than 2 million of England's poorest and most vulnerable to the brink of ruin as council tax demands continue to rise. Now, they create all of these. Well, first let's go back to the master land lease agreement here. You hear you're paying taxes to live on their land because you're consenting to it being their land. And the whole thing is, is that. Uh, government is a fiction that can't own anything. It's only by your consent that the uh, you know tax structure is there in the first place. They, they're taxing you to live on your own land, the miles do. You stand up and uh, be the heir instead of being a beneficiary of their system. You know that's how it was. You know, when you were born, you weren't. You're, you're born as the heir of this planet, and then, then, then uh, through their uh, human trafficking and their paper uh, system, putting on uh, their their books as a hypothecated person. You know, then they're administering your estates, and and you gotta you gotta pay to have the uh, privilege to live on their land. But I mean, as things get worse and worse, they just take more and more so the people have less and less uh, I don't I don't like to see anybody 
having to be subjected to this kind of a situation, but uh, in England it's getting really bad. And the, you know, of course, we know the foreclosures and evictions have been um, through the roof over there, as well as uh, uh, Australia and around the world. We've been watching these things. Right, mortgage foreclosure. That's Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. The human beings is, have been pledged to discharge congressional bankruptcy. We've got to get out of this. Well, I guess the cat agrees. Yeah, he's not right by nature. So, yeah, let's see. I mean, in a police state, it just uh, is all caused from this commercial crimes aspect being used to offset their congressional bankruptcy. And, um,. We've got uh, here the Information Liberation Nation. No, what is it? Informationliberation.com. SWAT team shoot teen girl and her dog during pot raid on wrong house. Oh, that's just terrible. It, from inception to extension. You know, these commercial crimes have to go. Orange County, Florida. Mother and her daughter are suing the Orange County Sheriff's Office after one of them was injured during a SWAT team search. A woman who didn't want to be identified said the Sheriff's Office SWAT team came looking for a family member who didn't live at their home back in 2010. I got up and went towards the door and literally once I went towards the door, boom, the daughter said. The woman was a minor at the time of the incident and said she was home alone when deputies showed up. I was 17. I was five feet, two inches, and a hundred pounds wet, she said, and they came in shooting. SWAT team apparently opened fire inside the home, and the family dog was killed. The dog was startled and ran to the closet, uh, to the room, and when he ran in, uh, to the room is when they shot him, she said. Now, this is back in 2010. We need to hold corporate counsel responsible for these things. And, of course, this is in Florida, so it was involved in the Rothstein scandal as well. So we need to put all of that together and, and um, you know, lay more charges against these investment bankers and, and um, others that were promoting these types of things. Incident report. State SWAT team members said the dog aggressively came toward them when they entered the house. Well, yeah, okay. Deputies found ammunition, but no weapons in the home. Cannabis seeds and drug paraphernalia was found in a room this suspect had, had lived in. Suspect had lived in, the report states. He was later arrested, but court records show the charges were eventually dropped. Yep, so they just, corporate counsel wanted to injure somebody. Yep. It wasn't for an arrest, it was to injure somebody. They came in, uh, and had told the law enforcement that, that somebody was armed and dangerous, of course, and prompted them into states of fear so that they could self-defend and privateer. And now corporate counsel has to be held accountable for these things and then go up higher to general counsel. So, yeah, they went in there because he was basically an alleged uh, uh, pot dealer. and then um, Undercutting the mafia, according to 27 CFR 72.11. Yeah, despite their claim to have surveilled the home extensively prior to the raid. Uh, and uh, let's see, so all charges against the suspect were later dropped, though. But their dog is dead, and the sister lives with horrible back pain due to the deputy's murder attempt, it says. Yes, Which it was. Yeah. For commercial crimes. Right. For counsel. You're in the wrong place at the right, uh, you're at the, you know, wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, you could get a bullet in you from the so-called law enforcement officers because they're operating under these principles of commercial crimes. It's found under 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72.11. It says all crimes are commercial. You know, crime, crimes against the revenue of the state. You, know, you don't want to. You, you don't want to trot upon the. Uh, Federal state's revenue stream, or you could uh, shot, get shot. And, and it's not just that. I mean, it's so disgusting to see 27 CFR 72.11 unlawful on its face. Kidnapping itself is listed as a commercial crime. 
That means that if you kidnap somebody, a citizen kidnap somebody, they're undercutting the federal government because that's what the federal government does. By court process, they operate under the action of bail, which is ballism. Worshipping martyr. It's absolutely, absolutely without a doubt, abhorrent to God. Yeah, we're going to end this commercial crime stuff. Uh, I mean, that's what has pushed humanity to this point. And it's been sold to us as a good thing, but, I mean, you can see, I hope you're starting to see now how much that it is just not. It has nothing to do with, you know, see, under the public law, you don't have to worry about these six million codes, regulations, statutes, laws, and all this 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 nonsense that's written uh, by these attorneys and lawmakers to you know for in order to uh, offset their congressional bankruptcy uh, public law you only have to adhere to one law do no harm okay under the restrictor principle of sovereign immunity these congress critters have been perpetuating this harm against humanity the war on drugs is a war against humanity uh all the rest of it bills and notes uh Making uh, the the entire uh, the legal system itself is it just a uh, hunting mechanism? It is. It's a hunting mechanism, and you're the hunted. The meat is showing hard there. So let's see here in the New York Times story: a trail of medical missteps in a Peace Corps death. Brentwood, California, Nick Castle had just graduated from the University of California, Berkeley, when he loaded up his backpack with Mandarin language books and set off for rural China to teach in the Peace Corps. Seven months later, in January 2013, at 2 a.m., telephone call jolted his parents awake. Uh, let's see, your son is not very, your son is very ill, a Peace Corps official from Washington told them. And so it goes on to say, Mr. Castle, weak from diarrhea and vomiting, had collapsed that day in the city of Chengdu and was in a hospital in a coma. His parents, David Castle, a police sergeant in this northern California city, and his wife, Sue, a former nurse, flew to China. Where days passed before a Peace Corps physician assistant told them the truth. Their son was brain dead. On February 7, 2013, they stood at their son's bedside at West China Hospital of Sichuan University and watched as a doctor withdrew life support from Mr. Castle. He was 23. Peace Corps spokesman called Mr. Castle's death from a gas intestinal illness a tragic experience to examine its own conduct the agency took the unusual step of engaging an outside American expert whose report concluded that despite medical missteps by the Peace Corps doctor who missed signs of serious illness Mr. Castle's death could not have been prevented Okay, I guess there's more of the story, but the story of his death pieced together from interviews and confidential reports and documents, including his autopsy, raises serious questions about Peace Corps medical care and how the agency responded to a volunteer's dangerous illness. Three months before he died, Mr. Castle suffered gastrointestinal problems and complained to his Peace Corps doctor of worrisome weight loss, but he received scant follow-up care. When he fell severely ill, the outside expert found the same doctor, a Chinese trained, trained gynecologist, was slow to see that he needed hospitalization and delayed calling an ambulance, which then got lost trying to reach him. By the time Mr. Castle arrived at the hospital, he had stopped breathing. An agency doctor who conducted internal inquiry into the death raised questions about an apparent lack of Define leadership in dealing with a very sick volunteer. Yeah, that's called a useless bread gobbler. They off him on quote accident. There are no accidents. There's only policy. He was volunteering to be 
whatever the local bankers needed him to be. And it's so sad to see these things. Don't volunteer for the Peace Corps. Peace means, stems from the word pact. Pact or agreement. And they have agreements between themselves to use human beings, of course, through the FDA and Ethics Commission, as human test subjects. And whatever is necessary, they'll do uh, according to fiscal policy. Whatever is most beneficial to the state. Yeah, and of course, you know, Israel raising Gaza is big business for Congress uh, in Paris. Police ban pro-Palestinian demonstration planned for Saturday after a string of pro-Palestinian marches turned violent in the past week. Paris's police authority has banned a march set for Saturday that is in protest of Israel's air and ground incursion in Gaza. CNBC is reporting the last 10 days have been some of the deadliest in aviation history. And uh, for those of you considering flying, I would maybe re-examine your quest. Is it worth it? <clears throat> of course the United Nations is out and about pre presenting hearts and minds to everybody. Uh, Israeli Foreign Ministry says terror tunnels leading from civilian centers including a hospital in Gaza into Israeli territory. Those are not terror, terror tunnels. You have shut up the West Bank through congressional action and human beings are attempting to garner supplies, much, much, much necessary supplies outside of what is provided them by the UN through the action of hearts and minds. And enough is enough. Absolutely, without a doubt, enough is enough. And those, those accountable for this genocide will be held accountable. You know, the police state always just, it breeds more of the same. Uh, and, you know, by the uh, admissions of uh, the writings from the uh, Church Committee Detailed Staff Force for Military Intelligence, um, when they talk about how the intelligence is produced, how the CIG later the CIA evolved into a intelligence uh, production operation essentially and you know so they create a problem uh, you know by uh, stirring up the pot on both sides of the conflict before it ever rises and you know then all of a sudden there's a need for this new military hardware and uh, who benefits but these military uh, industrial complexes like oh DARPA we have uh, Department of Defense RAND Corporation um, got NORAD Docky Martin Martin um, Lockheed Martin yeah Lockheed Martin and you've got Stockade that. Stockade Martin yeah. I guess you. Halliburton Dick Cheney's little baby there but now so so the US Army is developing tiny surveillance tools for the next big war already pocket drones future US Army soldiers sent into combat may have a brand new tool at your disposal the pocket drone uh, so probably you know what they'll be selling on the other side then is uh, you know they'll have a, a sophisticated fly swatter to take care of the problem the next production that Congress puts on and this is going out to Diane Feinstein can you please place Barta at that hole in Syria with Congress members? That'd be good. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, democracynow.org uh, decreeing brutal operation taking place in our name. Israeli military reservists refuse to serve. Yeah, this is uh, similar similar to the story one. I was reading earlier. And I love that one. He says, decrying the brutal occupation in our name. He's invoking God. Now, in the name of humanity, you're doing all of these things through human development, the UN, Congress, and um, it looks like uh, God's getting pissed. You don't think you're going to be held accountable now? 
Let's see. As, re as Israel pledges to continue the assault on Gaza for as long as it is required, we are joined by two Israelis who have refused to serve in their country's military reserves. On Tuesday, the Washington Post ran an open letter authored by Yale, uh, it's Y-A-E-L, even, or titled, We Are Israeli Reservists. We refuse to serve, announcing that more than 50 former Israeli soldiers have signed a petition declaring their refusal to be part of the Israeli military reserves. This petition, long in the making, has a special urgency because of the brutal military operation now taking place in our name. That's beautiful. Even or writes, I guess, even or writes, um, they got even and or capitalized, like that's a name or something. Uh, well, I guess it is. An Israeli journalist, journalist an activist, who evaluated candidates for the Israeli Army Recruitment Department during a service. Even Orr is now a graduate student in International Affairs at the New School in New York City. She joins us to discuss the reserves, reservist letter. Uh, we are also joined from Tel Aviv by Jonathan Shapira, a former Israeli captain and Air Force pilot who in 2003 spearheaded a letter signed by 27 Israeli pilots who refused to participate in military operations against Palestinians. Take note, IDF and the Israeli Ministry and uh, Department of Defense. Now, these are the same folks that you're speaking on behalf of saying, no, we're not agreeing with these things. So who are you speaking for? Right. Well, obviously it's for Congress and... Again, for offsetting their congressional bankruptcy. Absolutely. And the lies will be no more. And this is also written in Revelation. So it goes on uh, here that there's a, a whole, whole transcript to the conversation, I guess, that uh, took place. And, you know, basically it says it all in the summary. They're just, uh, they're refusing to... Uh, along with 50 other former Israeli soldiers to uh, to take part in this and and uh, let's see and although combat soldiers are generally the ones prosecuting today's war their work would not be possible without the many administrative roles in which most of us serve so if there's a reason to oppose combat operations in Gaza, there's also a reason to oppose the Israeli military apparatus as a whole. That is the message of this petition she wrote. Beautiful. And you can find this on democracynow.org, and there's several other sites um, as well. And I'll get those links up on TammyPepperman.org after the show. So what do you think about this whole BRICS thing now? We've got uh, Germany, it says it's rumored here, or it's asking the question at Investment Watch, is Germany secretly planning to join the BRICS and dump the U.S. dollar? Well, they might. Who knows? Uh, we'll see, because the U.S. dollar, of course, is the Federal Reserve note, or debt note. And uh, we'll see who's backing this BRICS thing. I haven't done the research that I need to do on this, and... and um, I'll get that done as soon as possible. I've been extremely busy this week with clerical duties. We've got Alan Greenspan now, who is saying to prepare for a uh, uh, dollar devaluation. Uh, I think I saw his obituary today. Alan Greenspan? I believe so. Let me go look. There was a Greenspan. What, what surprised me? What is like that guy, 203 years old or something? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that I saw that. My desk, Just every I time I look at these guys, like Cam and Kissinger, uh, let's see, Big Nose Brzezinski, uh, Bezignu, Bezignu Brzezinski, uh, all the rest of them, Herbert Walker Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush. No, I just think of that song. Uh, it says yeah. it was a hoax. Okay, the, the Iron Man, yeah, I, I thought so. That would have been, been bigger news because, oh my God, our imperial... A leader of the financial world just died, uh, Alan Greenspan. Right. But 
I, every time I look at these guys, though, I just think of that Iron Maid song, uh, yeah, Only the Good Die Young, and the evil seem to live forever. Yeah, and that's about it, too. Let's see. Sent worldwide. Shannon Hicks iconic Sandy Hook photo was fake. This is going back to the Sandy Hook uh, massacre hoax. Uh, more and more information coming out on that all the time about how that was just a big production. Just uh, just something to scare the sheeple back into their uh, places and, you know, um, promote uh, like a gun, anti gun agenda and. Oh, just all the controversy they generate from things like that right. puts money in the attorney's pockets. I'd like to warn all of our, quote, uh, black population. Now, normally I don't use entitlement in any way. However, the New York Times is reporting that Rand Paul is, only, is the only major GOP figure who seems eager to appeal for the African-American support. Now, Congress, as we've evidenced time and time and time again, Congress is absolutely racist, sexist, uh, it, it, it's religiously intolerant, and uh, again, it's your transgressor, and um, I, I urge everybody not to buy into this action of hearts and minds. Rand Paul needs your vote, he needs your support, but he, it, along with the rest of Congress, um, is not in support of humanity. Yeah, you got to be very afraid when these people come out and start saying they want to help you because uh, <laughs> they they want to help. Uh, yeah, they want to help you become a better product so they can cash in off you. Right. Is what they're really saying. 1864 Geneva Convention, 1929 Geneva Convention. These folks don't want to help anybody. 1924 uh, Racial Integrity Act. If you need more information. Uh, Margaret Sanger was uh, the uh, founder of a eugenics program in Planned Parenthood targeting the black population. And um, these things are sick, but they're all evidence. So again, I urge everybody not to support these uh, perpetrators of genocide in any way, shape, or form. So let's see, according to the story at the 21st Century Wire, the MH17 verdict, real evidence points to U.S. Kiev cover-up or failed false flag. And that's pretty much from the other stories uh, what it amounts to. And that's, and that's, that's the Congress backing, yeah. um, basically they're talking about U.S. Kiev. Right. Just another branch of uh, Congress. So. Right. And, and you know, when they do these false flag presentations, it's an action not only of hearts and minds as they offer you protection after they prey on you, but it's also a clear and present danger doctrine by which to prey on you. And it's the same thing as is written in Exodus itself. And then, of course, the resultant uh, uh, book of the manifest, which was Leviticus, uh, the action of taxation in exchange for protection for what Congress and its general counsel was doing upon mankind at that time. Which, of course, as everybody knows, that is a uh, relative walk. The Bible is written as a relative walk of humankind. And, and uh, the first part is manifest. The second part is, of course, the way to get off of the ship. From the Associated Press, judge recommends exoneration for a man who served 12 years for a rape that DNA testing proved he did not commit. Again, again, this is a production method. Uh, they do this often, they never lose, and uh, in those 12 years, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars were made through the action of diagnosis, through the CMS system, and uh, letting them out 12 years later does not hurt them, suing them does not hurt them, however, indictment does, and again, general counsel, corporate counsel needs to be held accountable for the presentation that they put on through the courtroom science dot com, which is the general counsel's uh, choreographer. Right, and that's uh, research you've been doing lately at uh, TammyPepperman.org. Tam yeah, okay, go there. But it comes from like the URSA? Well, that one's actually underneath the general counsel. Uh, they call attention to their underwriters, and one of them, of course, underwriting is insurance. 
these courtroom sciences that facilitate the choreography of all known court cases. Evidencing more and more how the whole thing is just a show. presentation, a show, an act, a play. It's called this in um, uh, the uh, Black's Law Dictionary. The court process itself is negotiorum gestio. The court uh, gestures, of course, the attorneys are called negotiorum gestors. Okay, another story here on the world food problems that uh, is basically created by Congress with uh, allowing all this genetically modified food to be slammed down our throats, literally and actually. Uh, glyce, uh, uh, glyphosate, am I, am I saying that right, Tammy? You're good with the uh, G-L-Y... P H O S A T E. Glyphosate. It sounds like it's before glycogen or uh, uh, glycophosphate. Isn't that uh, antifreeze or um, uh, derivative of what was supposed to be maintained as insulin, which is um, uh, glycolic acid? It must be a derivative of the glycolic acid. Okay, so I've taken it from this this blurb from the Active Post. Um, it, it's a bad thing, but um, the excerpt reads, He began noticing an absurd amount of deformed piglets and reproductive problems in the sows eating GMO soy. Yeah. He brought 38 malformed piglets to a laboratory where glyphosate concentrations were tested. So if it's modifying them, um, I'll do more research on it. Uh, I know that I've got several uh, uh, records of uh, microbiology and then metabolism itself. So I'll look into it and get up to speed on it. It's been several years since I researched microbiology. Yeah, we know there's all sorts of uh, uh, evidence that... that uh, the genetically modified organisms are uh, altering the physiology of those that ingest them. They feed a lot of this GMO, GMO soy now to uh, you know pigs that they're raising. Right. So what's that do to the uh, quality of the you know uh, pork products for people that eat well, those? Well, and that's the second harm upon humanity. The first harm is in uh, other products that the FDA suggests that human beings are consuming or are to consume for their health, but it's not for their health. The food pyramid is for their productivity. The recommended daily allowance that not only ensures productivity, but also ensures illness and disease later. And so it's not just GMOs that are bad for humanity. Um, you know, we talk about GMO corn a lot. But corn itself is a genetically modified grass, originally. It was never a natural uh, product. It was only modified in the beginning as maize or whatever it was way back when because it's actually a grass seed and it should look more like uh, Yeah, but they were high... Grass. There's a difference between using a hybrid of uh, organic uh, and organic as opposed to stuff that doesn't naturally go together Absolutely. like Corn using DNA uh, or you know components from other living organisms right other living organisms have a protein shell everything has a protein shell except for corn corn is all lactose originally so it's already modified from its original state it doesn't have that uh, protein shell on it not a natural one anyway. See, Al-Qaeda prepping for cyber attack on U.S. says Justice Department official. That's a warning. That's a warning, folks. That's They're telling you that they're getting ready to do this stuff when they, right. when they start, um, you know, uh, putting this stuff out there right. and posturing. This is known as posturing. Yeah, and they released just this year that uh, it's the CIA that does those things. John Carlin, Assistant Attorney General for National Security, U.S. Department of Justice, announced Thursday that al-Qaeda terrorists may be planning an attack on infrastructure within the U.S. 
to 9-11 proportions and that targets may include banking systems and power grids. Right, because they're losing that control on the banks. And I'll guarantee you, if the CIA uh, upper levels, such as Diane Feinstein directing at the Senate Intelligence Committee, um, you're tempted and you're going to be held accountable for harm against humanity. This is genocide again. And uh, uh, this presentation alone is uh, terrorism and psychological warfare. Uh, Moody's is saying uh, troubled Michigan cities may follow Detroit Chapter 9 plan. Now this story here is something that sickens me till to no end because uh, they've shut up the water to countless people in Detroit because they're unable to pay their water bill. And they're asking Why are we paying for water in the first place when it's our water? Right. And um, on top of that, again, it's the whole uh, Moses and Moses on the hill and Leviticus over and over and over again. This has to be shut down. So anyways, Moody's Investors Service says a successful resolution of Detroit's Chapter 9 bankruptcy restructuring may prompt other financially troubled Michigan cities to follow suit. The $7 billion debt reduction plan could serve as an example. Uh, uh, other distressed local governments in Michigan might follow. The rating agency said in a statement Friday, particularly important to the plan, it said was a March 2013 settlement between three insurers of general obligation unlimited tax bonds and the city that conferred a secured status of those bonds. The final outcome of this bankruptcy will likely have broader implications for future banking uh, bankruptcy cases involving distressed local governments in Michigan, potentially setting a, an important benchmark. Ooh. In other words, you're talking about precedence here right, for the relative position of debt versus pensions. Moody's vice president, uh, Gina Vive Nolan, said in a statement. So apparently, yeah. like shutting off the water to people is not seen as a bad thing to these guys. No, it sounds like it's setting precedence because they're being insured by somebody else other than who was insuring them before. We'll update as soon as we can because it sounds like they're under the new government structure, which is not United States Incorporated. I'll look into it and find out what's going on. I've been busy, so I haven't been paying attention to those things on the cost. And, yeah, let's see. Um you know, water shut off foes deliver petitions and water for Detroit. Um, it's at Detroit News. Um, you know, they got, uh, let's see, the opponents of the water department's controversial shut off campaign over unpaid bills rallied Thursday outside City Hall delivering petitions, signatures, and gallons of water to support Detroit families. Patricia Jones, a program leader with the Massachusetts based Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, gathered 6,000 signatures from clergy and others across the country who are demanding an end to the Detroit Water and Sewage Department shutoffs and for Detroit's elected leaders to issue permanent protections. Uh, I know Canada was one of the groups that delivered water, uh, you know, to help these people with their water right. problems. And, and really, in reality, what needs to happen is that the administration needs to be gone and uh, the citizens need to step up and be their own authority. Take back your land. Your water. Water. Everything. And this needs to occur. Stop patronizing them. Uh, let's see here. So we want to get into uh, the idea of consensus reality here. Is yeah, we were talking to, about uh, the courtroom sciences earlier. And... Um, you know, consensus reality is something that everybody is so used to. This cartoon, everything is consensus reality. It's not relativity. It's maintained and perpetrated by psychological warfare through the action of education, stemming from pedagogy, meaning attendance on boys. And um, the, the more you know, the less likely you are to be preyed on. You are being hunted, so you, you are to know and not be living in consensus reality. So over at your site now I'm reading, and from Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, 
Uh, let's see here. Um, well, first you have the definition. Um, consensus reality is that which is generally agreed to be reality based on a consensus. Now, so Black's Eighth says a fact is something that actually exists, an aspect of reality, is the fact that all people are mortal. Facts include not just tangible things, actual occurrences and relationships, but also states of mind such as intentions and opinions, an actual or alleged event or circumstance as distinguished from its legal effect, consequent, consequence or interpretation. Uh, that's why I hate that word. And, I, and a lot yeah. of these agents, the psychiatrists that come at us are always using the fact, the fact, the fact. Well, that's not evidence. Yeah, and then you quote Joseph Goebbels here, the most brilliant propagandist technique will yield no success unless one fundamental principle is born in mind constantly. It must confine itself to a few points and repeat them over and over. Right. If you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. Now, of course, the main uh, portion of that, um, when I did that on consensus reality, was from Courtroom Science Incorporated. Quote, In the courtroom, preparation is everything and perception is reality. At CSI, our litigation consultants help tailor your case to meet the needs of the jury so that you can maximize the odds of a favorable outcome. Our team of consultants can talk jury research. Now, get this, well, quote, train witnesses. Train them. And instead of a witness evidencing for themselves what they're witnessing, here's the CSI here, Courtroom Science Incorporated, training witnesses and telling them what they saw. And, and we were able to evidence that several times throughout not only your case, um, but also through the case with uh, uh, the House of Jonathan and the House of Larson as well. And uh, one particular incident was a 911 call because I was on the phone with Bonnie at the same time that the perpetrator of an assault was on the phone with 911. Well, we got the 911 call that was absolutely torn apart by, of course, the um, uh, county commission, uh, what was his name, the one that uh, sent back to the green card, Van Sickle. And um, in that, they cut out the parts that evidence uh, Bonnie was assaulted by this John Riley character. And um, although I have the recording of the assault and then the subsequent recording of when the officer got there and he had called into the uh, prosecuting attorney and she told him not to take a report. And it was very, very interesting to watch all of these things go down and the use of consensus reality and the lack of evidence and um, everything that was produced by the local corporate counsel. You could read more at www.courtroomsciences.com on that one. Um, and of course, I have the definition of pedagogy, treatise on education, which I urge everybody to read. I know it's a long one. But it says it all. It says, you know, you, uh, a slave master can alter the mind and create farm animals. And that's what's happened to all of humanity. And, of course, I call attention to Psychiatrists, The Men Behind Hitler, which is one of the best books out there that simplifies this concept as to why you are being engineered uh, by uh, concept engineering to be these farm animals and again to depopulate yourselves at the behest of the same psychiatrists that operated during Nazi Germany. And for more information you can go to tammypepperman.org consensus reality. And one of the reports, sorry, um, they just now came out, uh, probably, let's see, the July 19th, was a historical account on BBC, which I thought was very profound, uh, Victorian Strangeness, the era when it was fashionable for ladies to limp. 
And that goes along with the consensus reality. It was a fad at that time uh, to limp, to have a certain disease or illness. And of course, we have experiences. You know, when I was going through and Bo was going through the um, uh, cancer of Bo's mother that never had a diagnosis or anything, uh, when I was socializing with uh, Sonia, and going from place to place with other elderly females, they would be in competition. It was a fad to have cancer, and um, sadly, it was evidence right after uh, she had passed that Edna got the same thing, you know, and then ended up dying within six months. And and that's what happens because in these things, they're promised great insurance. They have better doctors. And all of these things are what is the metaphor of the snake in the garden. That snake is telling these females, look what I got, honey. And when these females go towards that, it indeed kills them. That tree of knowledge kills them. And that's what the Lord God does if you patronize it. And so from the, the uh, BBC News, uh, Victorian Strangeness, the bizarre tale of the ladies who limped. In the well-heeled streets of London, something peculiar, peculiar was afoot in Edinburgh, too. Things were askew. Before long, the phenomena had worked its way across the land, passed from town to town like a contagion, leaving hobbling knots of sufferers wherever it went. Now, this is in regards to, with the honorable exception of Lady Gaga's frock of meat, it was the most thunderingly daft episode in the entire history of fashion, says the author Jeremy Clay. It goes on to explain, but in an age of ailments, from potter's rod to chimney sweep scrotum, there were no physical grounds for the spreading infirmity. It preyed on the young and capricious, the suggestible and the status obsessed, or to put it another way, the fashionable. They called it the Alexandria limp, and it was quite possibly the only fad to be born in a sick bed. Alexandra of Denmark was the bride of the Prince of Wales and a 19th century fashion icon. The clothes she wore were copied as well. The choker she wore to conceal a scar on her neck were copied, and when a bout of rheumatic fever left her with a pronounced limp, well, that was copied too. It w in the well-to-do hot spots of Britain, toting women began clumping about in a style that suggested they'd recently stood barefoot on discarded Legos. At first, it was a DIY affair. Women would simply grab old shoes to help them trot her effectively. But county shopkeepers soon realized there was a pretty penny to be made from what otherwise would be a retail's most unshiftable line. Wildly mismatched footwear with one high heel and one low. So again, Eve is consuming these concepts and being fashionable, going with the flow, buying into these things, and of course that is the metaphor of the tree of knowledge. And that's why we're here. We need to get out of consensus reality. Get back to the public law relativity, actuality, and humanity will be better for it. Because at this point in time, when everybody's buying these concepts, they're buying law. All of these concepts are law. Nomenclature stems from the, the action of grabbing something and giving it a name. And at that point, it was limping. Um, they were able to sell many, many things because of these things. And in that, uh, of course, that's how everybody finds themselves civilly dead. They're buying the concepts. Yeah, that's an interesting story. I didn't know that. Uh, it was it seems like it would work uh, uh, towards the uh, depopulation uh, agenda as well. Absolutely, and, and we've seen that over and over again. Uh, the histrionic female is really popular these days, shaking her butt, and when her looks fade, she turns into Munchausen or Munchausen by proxy, and it's the same thing over and over and over again. She's buying the right to be, and feminism is the most horrifying use of politics against the female. It teaches her that she is not 
until she proves that she is in some way. And of course, this story alone is evidence of that. She was proving that she was somebody, she was well to do by having one heel shorter and one heel longer. And, and again, we go back to all of those cancer diagnoses that followed Sonia. They were in competition. They had better doctors. They had a better specialist. They had better insurance. And that was a sign of, of uh, money. It was basically a sign of, of being well to do. If you have great insurance, you're better off than that other guy who's not insured. And of course, uh, back to back, within eight months, uh, both of them have passed away. Yeah. And what you got to realize on these insurance policies, the doctors are looking at those. And they're finding uh, ways to uh, extract those funds as quickly as possible. And guess what? When those funds are gone, it's like, well, I, I guess you took a turn for the worse, and you're not going to make it. Yeah. Ativan and Haldol quickly shuts down the body's ability to breathe, uh, the body's ability to function, and that's what it's all about. And uh, we watched that with Bonnie the last time that Phil... And I were talking about her, uh, her physical appearance. She said she has a slight headache. And uh, the doctor had diagnosed her with terminal. So she just lay down and uh, requested, I think, uh, morphine is what was requested. And it wasn't very long before Bonnie was gone as well. And, and these are fads. These are the same fads that have always been. And... Uh, you know, the majority is suffering from what is known as somatoform. And that is basically what Jesus talked about in the Bible. She was lacking touch, lacking love, and looking for a way to prove her identity or herself. And um, she doesn't need to be affirmed. To all of the females out there, to all of humanity, you already are before psychiatry tells you that you are not. So it seems like whether it's the medical industrial complex or wars, people are dying all the time for concepts. Right. And on They're that buying note, the concepts. Right. And on that note, uh, we've hit the two-hour mark here. Bo, do you have any parting words? Oh, uh, no. Let's see. I had a couple of Chicago stories I was going to hit, but... Uh, just uh, some good stuff, though. Repeated deacon charging sexual abuse of teen. And another one, um, husband of X County Club Hills chief gets one year in prison. And, of course, she had gotten already busted for uh, redirected $917,000 from the state job training grant to help remodel her home. Holy Traveled to Las Vegas and distributed cash to friends and family. No, so, I'll get those so, 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 so she got busted, and now, uh, and her husband got busted for uh, being a uh, uh, conspirator. But that's even well, Adam. Yeah. How many? You tell it first. It convinces him it's a great idea. It's not very good when he rolls on you. Ultimately. So, yep, that's all I got then. So everybody be well. We'll see you next time. Well, we'll take us out with some grim facts. Those are just the grim facts. Alice Cooper. Be well, everybody.